and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ellie Taylor and Josh Whittacombe, James Acaster, Hugh Dennis and Rob Beckett. <laughs> we start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. Here's a picture of Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn this week. So what's going on here? Is, is this the beginning of the world's most harrowing sex education lesson? <laughs> is he actually launching the new Trident replacement? <laughs> is it just him going, ladies? <laughs> you just do that in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think is a really sexy voice. Oh, cheers, mate. Sorry. Cheers. Yeah. Has the marrow entered Jeremy Corbyn in a funny-looking vegetable competition? <laughs> Is this a photo of the last two leaders of the Labour Party? <laughs> <laughs> Does Corbyn he... defects to the Greens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely one. Uh, yeah. 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 Thanks. Too right. But I think. I reckon. That, I think that's the first joke I've done in three years on it. <laughs> I've got this on it. Is he saying new debating rules? We can only speak when we are holding the marrow. <laughs> <laughs> this is a photo of a politician and a really big vegetable, two of the only things that wear rosettes. <laughs> <laughs> is it Jeremy Corbyn's party piece? And he says, I intend to close the conference by playing Jerry Rafferty's Baker Street on my marrow. <laughs> Oh, if you just mind, you played the air saxophone oh. on a marrow. That would be the finest. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> that's, the, that's, the only... <laughs> that's the only way you'll join in with the national anthem is on a novelty marrow oh. sax. <laughs> 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 Uh, recreating the dick pic he sent to Diane Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it looks like the massive penis of a man who is hiding in that tree. It's over Jeremy Corbyn's okay. shoulder. Yeah. Can we move towards the correct answer, please? It's Jeremy Corbyn <laughs> holding a marrow. Is it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right, James. It is Jeremy Corbyn holding a marrow. Yes, this is a picture of Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn holding a marrow presented to him by a local store in Brighton prior to this week's Labour Party conference. Have you been watching the conference? We all expected more. Wait, I thought two weeks in of Corbyn's leadership, London would be burned to the ground. <laughs> Buckingham Palace would be a soup kitchen. <laughs> That, you know, the, the Queen would be queuing at a gyro centre, <laughs> waiting for her benefits. What is the Queen? Uh... <laughs> I get the feeling, though, he doesn't really want to discuss much the conference. He's just still so overexcited he got in. <laughs> I think, like, he's like the conference, he's just, just excited he's got a hotel room for a couple of nights. <laughs> <laughs> he's like on the phone to John McDonald going, yeah, if you just put a card in the wall, it turns the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it. We've got bathrobe slippers. You're mini bar locked as well. <laughs> yeah, I know, Malton Brown. Quality, innit? <laughs> <laughs> Why did one of Corbyn's shadow cabinet appointments upset farmers? Oh, uh, it's uh, his, uh, his farming minister yep. is a vegan. She's the only politician less welcome on a farm than David Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about having a vegan agriculture minister is they will not talk bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> they talk organic mulch. <laughs> she wants to treat to meat eaters the same as smokers, doesn't yeah. she? And you're thinking, well, you know, certainly if you go into Pizza Hut and order the meat feast, you'll think twice about that, wouldn't you, if you have to eat it outside? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If people gathered outside offices to just eat meat, <laughs> I think that would become enormously popular. Just with a pepperami oh, like this. Yeah, exactly. Bloody hell, it didn't used to be like this, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Sitting under one of those heat lamps, it's slowly cooking. <laughs> <laughs> mm, <speaking of> <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine 
You can imagine meat eaters going away to European holidays just to come back to be like, it was amazing, you can still eat meat inside over there. <laughs> <laughs> but then the NHS could help with, like, wean you off with, like, a meat patch. <laughs> or you could just chew an OXO cube if you were getting, like, packs. <laughs> could you put an OXO tube into a, an, an e-cigarette and, like, and vape it? Would that say... <laughs> And that perform the same thing. Oh, beefy. No. No, I really need Sorry, it just sounded like you're having sex with Ian both of them. Tell him again about those long walks, beefy. Uh, <laughs> I think she's got a point, though. I think, like, I think meat is quite similar to smoking. I think, you know, a lot of people after sex, they like to have a cigarette. And I like to, after sex, just have um, a quick spit roast. <laughs> okay, who also had a party conference this week? I believe it was UKIP. It Dara. was, of course, UKIP. Yes, they did, actually. Yeah, Nigel yeah. Farage, big fan of the show. How are you, Nigel? Good to the. Uh... <laughs> the thing about it was that they didn't have enough people, did they, at UKIP? <laughs> they, uh, they had to slash the ticket prices because nobody was turning up. I mean, they keep on telling us the country is full, but they can't even fill their own conference hall, can they? <laughs> It was at Doncaster Racecourse, which is weird, it. given the trouble they've had with the first-past-the-post system. Why was it? <laughs> <laughs> there was a woman who'd had a tattoo of Nigel Farage yes, done was. on her arm. There we go. But I'm wondering if it was a mistake. I'm wondering if the... You're uh... wondering if it was a mistake. <laughs> well, only I just wonder if the tattooist said, oh, uh, I'm going to be doing a painful prick on your arm. <laughs> <laughs> you were surprised by what she got. Why are these people paying to go and watch the UKIP conference? Do you know what I mean? If you want to watch, like, boring old men in shit clothes talk about hating foreigners, Top Gear's on Amazon soon. <laughs> <laughs> in other news, what essential task will British astronaut Major Tim Peake be responsible for aboard the International Space Station? Was this uh, the geezer they're sending up to fix the toilet? OK. <laughs> We're not just sending the geezer up to fix the toilet. <laughs> Am I wrong? In, in, no, in many Am ways you're correct. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Former helicopter pilot is Major Tim Peake. Please is tell me he was a plumber first. He was. He was never, I've never seen he was a plumber. <laughs> they didn't go, yeah, we just got to train a guy. He'll be with you in a, yeah. in a month or two. I love it if he was the plumber first. But yeah, I can do that, but I'll, I'll finish work at three on a Friday. <laughs> They'll be floating around the space station going, is that between two and six? Is that between two and six? I can't believe, I can't believe I stayed in for this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hope space walk worked out. Uh, <laughs> it's a not an ordinary toilet, though, is it? No, it's Because it's, weight, it's weightless, isn't it? So you have to hold yourself down, yep. and then you poo into a vacuum cleaner. Yes, you do. It's not just a hoover, though, is it? It's a, it's a hoover and a big fan that apparently keeps everything flowing in the right direction. What happens when the shit hits the fan? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's going, he's going up there just to fix the toilet, but it's like... <laughs> or are they sending him up like, to be a toilet attendant? So is he taking up a load of aftershave with him and some chopper chops? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, Armani, no Panani! <laughs> No splash, no gash. That's another one they say, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just repeating what they say to me in the toilet. Hey, you go to very yeah. different nightclubs than the ones I go. Andy, when was the last time you went to a nightclub? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, Andy. Four weeks ago, Rob. Yeah. 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 Come on. And did they have the directions you were looking for? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, <laughs> it was a jump to the left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you went to a nightclub, Dad? I went dancing about a week ago. Was yeah. it? Yeah, a nightclub in Dublin. Yeah, a great night dancing. Oh, I've been dancing with you. Uh, yeah, you've I been dancing. I bet you dominate a dance floor. Oh, I own the floor, <laughs> bitches. Um, <laughs> Attitude Festival, Dara, uh, they put on Eternal Flame. Yeah. And you've got everyone in the tent to form a circle. <laughs> and then you danced in the middle. <laughs> I can also play yeah. it on the marrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a <laughs> <laughs> Is it right with the 
astronaut's toilet, they've got... Because they have to reverse in. Well, well, we, all, we all have to reverse in, I yeah. suppose. <laughs> Well, it's a very strange technique. What? I actually uh, come up through the U-Bend. <laughs> <laughs> you sit like that, like one of those um, annoying bosses at work going, right, so... <laughs> yeah. Good quarter, good quarter, guys! <laughs> I've got a flash in my nose, watch! <laughs> 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 OK, this is unnecessary to tell the story, but yeah. there is a comedian that we all know and we can't tell you who it was, who uh, very drunkenly came into the toilet once uh, and at a hotel in Go, I think it was, and sat down on the porcelain, and did what he had to do, went to bed, uh, got up the next day and looked in the bath uh, and <laughs> had sat on the edge of the bath. <laughs> oh, oh, my God! Hey. Is that Ed Bird? Yeah. No, it's not Ed Bird. <laughs> 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 While we're in space, uh, although we weren't, we're in a hotel and go, we're having a shit in a bath. Uh... <laughs> We weren't. I didn't look across. <laughs> <laughs> all around it, back to back. Yeah. Four, all the four Irish, Irish comedians all going, oh, hello. <laughs> so, yes, while we're in space, what exciting discovery did NASA announce this week? They've discovered liquid water. I didn't know that water could be any other form. <laughs> but anyway. Are you, liquid... You're familiar with steam and ice, I yeah, presume. <laughs> <laughs> now we play a round called Is There Laugh on Mars? <laughs> this game involves James and Josh, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand up challenge. I launched the Wheel of News, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is technology. Who is coming that? Josh. Uh, I, I don't want to brag, but um, I've got a new debit card. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've one of the old uh, touchy down here. Go on, if you haven't got one of these, you have not lived, my friends. <laughs> oh, my God. Never did you feel so smug in your life. Well, there you go. How would you like to pay? Just have, mate. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, am I off? The future. <laughs> Thing is, you get used to it. You can't go back. You're going somewhere now. Well, they haven't got the technology. Do you want to just put in your PIN number? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you expect me to stand here for four seconds <laughs> pushing buttons? <laughs> what is this, a Victorian workhouse? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Marks and Spencers, no! <laughs> I'll be getting my Percy pigs elsewhere in future! <laughs> the worst is when you think they have the touchdown technology, but they haven't. You look like you've never used a debit card. <laughs> Four in your life! <laughs> How do you like to pay? You're just going. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having a breakdown? <laughs> I don't like it when they've got the terminal and they have to ask for your permission. Do you mind if I just. Yeah, come give a shit, mate. Just... <laughs> what? what? Yeah, just in case he goes, do you mind if I just. Yeah, £4,000 unlucky, my friend. <laughs> Enjoy your Sprite. <laughs> it's the opposite of the other one I don't like, which is when the waiter makes too much of not looking at your PIN number. Hey, if you'd just like to put in your PIN number. <laughs> well, I wasn't suspicious of you until now. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with James. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the subject is food. I'm trying to eat more healthily lately. I've uh, I bought some ready-to-eat apricots this week. <laughs> they say you are what you eat, which is true, because as soon as I bought the ready-to-eat apricots, I was ready-to-eat apricots. <laughs> Those ready to eat apricots, they came in a resealable bag as well, because not everyone's as ready to eat apricots as they think they are. <laughs> Maybe next time they'll buy ready to eat some apricots. <laughs> I know shitloads about bread. <laughs> There's no such thing as prawn bread. 
So, the origin of prawn toast remains a mystery. <laughs> Favourite place to eat is pret a manger uh, If you don't know pret a manger it's an authentic French restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so much in there, so much to manger. I love manger in there. I think my favourite thing to manger is the yoghurts. I love to manger the yoghurts. So, uh, you've got granola on top, then mainly yoghurt, then like fruit compote at the bottom. It's like, the way they eat it in Paris and <laughs> get a spoon, you mix it all together and then you manger it that way. If you like, or if you like, just leave it as it is, don't mix it and just work your way down in order. Like start off with nothing but granola to begin with, just shoveling raw granola in your mouth, just <laughs> deflecting off your teeth, then power through the yoghurt for a really long time, getting absolutely nothing out of it. Then <laughs> end on the tangy compote. Like, whoa, what a finale! Ah, oh, that's all. <laughs> So I eat yoghurt, I eat them like they're packaged. That's why I like them fruit corners. They come with that little chaser. <laughs> Thank you very much. To the end of that round, the points go to James A. Castro. <laughs> the next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ellie, which category would you like? Uh, world news, please. World news it is. The answer is five years. What is the question? Um, is it how long before David Cameron makes his wife a ham sandwich again? <laughs> is it how long it took me to do the first two years of school? <laughs> is it how long does it take Rob Beckett to clean his teeth? <laughs> Uh, it's not far off, I just have to do it a bit whenever I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant work, it's just a bit of sillet bang and a stiff broom, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> is it, on average, how much younger do I look on Dave? <laughs> <laughs> is it, if there was a fire alarm at Bake Off, how long would it take Mary Berry to exit the tent? <laughs> Awful image of like the commoners just looking at a body going, see what's happening here, you've left her in too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It is cooked in the middle. <laughs> so well done. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, melon seal will keep it light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Do They'll do a few funny little yeah. mug around, it'll be fine. Be, yeah. As they cremate <laughs> Mary Berry, melon seal will be there going, ready, set, break. <laughs> <laughs> is it, for how long have I wondered why Mary Berry is nothing like her sister Hallie? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long that my battery lasted on my Nokia 3310? <laughs> Still going somewhere in a drawer. Somewhere in a drawer, that phone is still there going, Yeah, I'm still here. You can't stop me. You've even taken the battery out. It doesn't matter. I'm playing Snake on myself. <laughs> I bought a Nokia 3310 because I had my phone stolen. Got, put it in a drawer. Got my phone stolen again six months later and just took up and it was still going. When you've got mates that ring you, it, it, the battery goes down. <laughs> Okay, do you have the correct answer? I think it is how long have the European Union known that you could cheat on emissions tests? That's absolutely right. Thank you very much. Well done, Hugh. Yes. The question I was looking for was, how long have EU officials known about devices being used to cheat emission tests in diesel cars? This revelation follows the news of Volkswagen, the world's biggest car manufacturer, has been caught using so-called defeat devices on 11 million cars. So it's like, what, the, the, when it gets tested, it's not emitting as much... This is the freaky thing. The car knows it's being tested, yeah. so the car kind of shuts down its engine a bit, so yeah. it doesn't... It misses much stuff. Well, so that, that's just like holding in farts on the first date. <laughs> like it's almost got, the that's exact all it is. Parallel. And then once you're going out with them, bums away. <laughs> 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 that is almost exactly the yeah. metaphor which best explains it. It's a bit boring, though, isn't it, if a scandal goes, isn't it? So, I mean, last week I missed out on Piggate yeah. and now we're talking about diesel emissions. <laughs> Do you think, can't someone spice it up and get a politician to stick their dick in a Beatles exhaust or something? <laughs> <laughs> it 
there is good news out there, though, isn't there? For those VW executives that have been implicated and for the shareholders, because if they are thinking of ending it all in the classic car fumes way, <laughs> they'll, be able to, they'll be able to do it much quicker than they originally thought, won't they? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it is boring, though. I think this is the most exciting German emissions scandal since Boris Becker went in that broom cupboard in <laughs> <laughs> People are saying that it's going to damage the reputation of Germany and they're not going to come back from it. They've come back from worse. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and you know what I'm talking about? Frank Lampard's goal, 2010. <laughs> uh, how has a monkey sparked debate this week? Oh, it's the selfie monkey. It is the selfie monkey. That's, that's, right. Right. that's obviously quite an old story, the monkey that took the selfie, and we all like that picture, but we now know. it's like in court that who owns the rights to the image? Yep, and this some is the people, monkey. It's debates whether it's the photographer who owned the camera and left it there for the monkey to play with, or if it is the monkey... <laughs> Who owns the right to a photo he didn't know it was taken? <laughs> How long does it take for him to clean his teeth? <laughs> Animal rights activists and PETA have argued that the monkey should own the rights to the photograph and therefore should gain any financial benefit from the photograph, <laughs> including the money we will spend by putting him on the show now. So, if whatever quid it costs to take a photograph on something like Mock the Week, the monkey will be sitting somewhere in Borneo or somewhere going, cha-ching! Uh, <laughs> making, making it rain, darling. Ma making it rain! <laughs> 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 The funny thing about this is, is the fact that, like, how degrading for the photographer that the greatest photo that was ever taken was done by a monkey, not him. <laughs> but the monkey's not going to have a career as a photographer. I'm not going to go to a wedding and they're going to go, where's the photographer? Uh, masturbating and throwing shit at the bride. Not again, anyway. <laughs> this ruined the first wedding. This is why we had to do it all again. Here's our wedding photos. It's just a load of selfies taken by a monkey. Uh, <laughs> obsessed with itself. <laughs> it grows in the veil, holding the book. <laughs> just, it, behind it, there was like a bride and groom just trying to look around. It. <laughs> <laughs> like going, wow! <laughs> just taking photographs of Everyone's there. <laughs> I'm betting on a bit of yourself again. <laughs> <laughs> You doing a selfie again, selfie monkey? <laughs> just, just, just wasting everyone's time. Uh, uh. <laughs> 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 okay, now just the bride's family. <laughs> just the br <laughs> if you can't see the camera, I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when. The point's gonna rock you and James! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. <laughs> and that's a wonderful sleight of hand from the Welsh fly half. He's picked up the loose ball, he's tucked it back in his shorts, <laughs> and nobody seems to have noticed. I can see Nico Rosberg's helmet. <laughs> Apologies, after 15 years in this job, I've just been told it's not pronounced croquette. <laughs> After that victory, they'll be dancing on the street of Samoa tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 100 metres in four hours, 26 minutes, and that is metre reading at its very best. <laughs> now, Gary Kasparov, he's going to move his pawn. And he's done it just in time. His wife's home, but he's got it under the bed. <laughs> Welcome to beach volleyball. The players are currently getting changed into their kits while their mums hold a towel up in front of them. <laughs> and Shane Warne will be laughing on the other side of his face after that surgery. 
I'd like to apologise. What you're watching is, in fact, judo. And not, as I said earlier, timed pyjama cuddling. <laughs> Well, this should be relatively easy for Rory McElroy. Oh, how has he done that? All he had to do was say, get a Santander, one, two, three, it now. <laughs> Kasparov toying with his bishop. <laughs> and on his wife's home, she's caught him! <laughs> oh, that pot was remarkable. But now I've got a major case of the munchies. <laughs> We'd just like to refute the idea that the BBC has lost coverage rights of all good sports. We now cross to a girl playing noughts and crosses against a clown. <laughs> <laughs> what a thrilling cricket match. <laughs> <laughs> left hand, big right hand, right hand again, big left hand. Why has no one put these gloves in pairs. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is a furlong? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next topic is unlikely things for a continuity announcer to say. On ITV2 next, what Katie did next? Which I'm guessing is get her tits out and marry some thick prick for publicity purposes. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> A very special episode of Songs of Praise now, coming live from Stringfellows. <laughs> that was Game of Thrones, and if you're affected by any of the issues raised in that show, what the fuck is wrong with your family? <laughs> Is masturbation bad for you? That's not the next programme, I'm just thinking aloud. <laughs> <laughs> next up, baking and entering with Anthony Worrell Thompson. <laughs> next up, Ross Kemp meets one of America's toughest gangs. But before that, a minute's silence for Ross Kemp. <laughs> No! Oh, this is bullshit! Hate it when the eggheads win. <laughs> <laughs> now on Channel 4, one born every minute, including graphic scenes of childbirth that some viewers may find inspiration to get a coil. <laughs> and now on Channel 4, skins. Four skins. <laughs> Up on Channel 4 plus one minus two divided by three. <laughs> Countdown. <laughs> Next up, we have literally the only episode of Top of the Pops 2 we're allowed to show. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mock the Week. Wasn't it weird when one of them said the exact same thing I'm saying right now? Still, talented fella. <laughs> Next up on BBC... Wait a minute, are those hippos swimming in a circle? What? <laughs> Why are we watching Homes Under the Hammer? <laughs> <laughs> now it's one of those X Factor episodes where they sing next to a swimming pool. I presume to prepare them for a life singing on cruise ships. <laughs> ah. You're watching the adult channel plus one. Because that Viagra is taking a while to kick in. <laughs> well, next up, it's Midlands Today. So if you're watching in the Orkneys, you can fuck off. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point is going to James here and Rob. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Eddie Taylor, and Josh Willicombe.
Commiserations to James A. Carter, Hugh Dennis, and Rob Beckers. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. The entire fifth season of Radio 4's sketch.